Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Acid Base Reactions module. This is video number 17 and we're going to start to um, play around with some numbers as we look at a few different examples of solutions involving acids and or bases. Now we're going to also need to include our use of the equation for calculating pH. So I guess the first thing to say about these is there's three examples in this video. Um, you can have a look at them all together or one at a time. Feel free to pause the video, perhaps even turn down the sound and just watch the process. See if you can calculate the answers to each of these as I do them um, and see if we get the same answers. And if you don't, let me know. Um, we can always check and make sure that we haven't made any silly mistakes along the way. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to have a look at what happens to the pH of a solution after it's been diluted. So here we have um, some nitric acid, HNO3, in solution. We know that the initial volume of the solution is 5 mils. And I'm already going to convert that to 0 0.005 litres. Only because I know that if I'm looking at concentrations in moles per litre, I'm going to have to get that back to litres just for consistency sake. So you can see I've also got an initial concentration which is equal to 0 0.01 moles per litre. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute this to a 100 mil solution. So my final volume is equal to be is going to be equal to be 100 mils which is going to be 0.1 liters and I need to calculate the pH of the dilute solution so in order to calculate the pH of the dilute solution we need to uh, use our formula which uh, is that pH is minus the log base 10 of the concentration of hydrogen ions so I need the concentration of hydrogen ions to do this question I also know that because I'm dealing with nitric acid, it's a monoprotic acid. So therefore, if I uh, just move it over here a little bit, I know that when it ionizes in water, and I'll just simplify this a little bit to H plus ions and NO3 minus ions, and of course they're aqueous. The important thing here is the mole ratio is going to be one to one. Now, if I include water, which is a better way of doing it, um, I'm just a little bit cramped for space, um, the ratio will still be one to one. And the form of the hydrogen will be the hydronium ion H3O plus, and that's fine. So what I need is this concentration. So what I want to know is what is the final concentration of the solution? And then that's what I'm going to plug into my equation. So in order for me to do that, I'm going to need to um, have to find the relationship between the initial solution and the final solution. Now I know that I always put my name on my CV, so the number of moles is equal to the concentration multiplied by the volume. Now one of the important things about this is if I look at the initial number of moles, I can multiply the um, initial concentration by the initial volume, but I'm also aware that I haven't actually added any of my uh, acid during the dilution, I've only added water. So therefore, the number of moles initially is the same as the number of moles finally. So these two values are the same. And what that means is that the C initial V initial is equal to C final V final, because I just put these two equal to each other. Because I don't know the final one, if I divide both sides by VF, I'm going to be able to find the final concentration is going to be the initial concentration 0 0.01 multiplied by the initial volume, which is 0 0.005. And then I'm going to divide all of that by 0 0.1, which is my final volume. And that is going to give me, and I'll just um, pop this on the calculator. So 0 0.01 times 0 0.005 and then divided by uh, 0.1 is going to give me a value of um, 5 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per litre. To find my pH, then I put that value in. So pH is equal to minus 
the log base 10 of 5 times 10 to the minus 4, and that's going to give me a pH value of 3.3. Uh, It's hard on these little slides to set these things out um, vertically and make sure that you have everything neat and tidy. And it, and it doesn't really matter at this point as much whether you can get to the right solution. It's obviously better if you can, but that you make sure that your sequence is easy for a marker to follow, that they know what formulas you've used, what values you've used. And if you have made a mistake anywhere, as I may have, I can go back in and check uh, anywhere along the line were my initial values correct? Were my final values correct? What assumptions did I make about what was going to be used? How did I rearrange the equations in order to try and solve the problem? Substitute my values, find my initial um, number, and then use that number to calculate my final result. So setting your work out is really, really important. Here's the second one, and as I said, it's going to be a bit of a longer video, this one, um, but that's because we need to work through some examples, and I thought I'll put them all on together, and then you can start and stop them as you, as you choose. So here's a neutralization problem, and in this neutralization problem, we need to know what volume of a 0.1 molar sulfuric acid solution reacts completely with 17.8 mils of a 0.15 moles per litre potassium hydroxide solution. So let's first of all write an equation, H. 2SO4 aqueous for the sulfuric acid is going to react with potassium hydroxide KOH aqueous. It's an acid based reaction, so it's going to form a salt and water. So I can write water down straight away, and it's also going to form a salt. The salt is going to be a salt between the potassium and the sulfate. And I know that the um, Potassium has a 1 plus and the sulfate has a 2 minus, and I can actually get that from the number of hydrogens if I'm not sure. Uh, so that's the formula. I also use my NAG SAG to remember that group 1 um, metals form soluble salts, so the K2SO4 will be a soluble salt and therefore aqueous. My next step is to make sure that my equation is balanced. Um, and at this point, I've got 2 Ks over here, so I need 2 Ks over here. I've also got um, the hydrogens here are going to be contributing to water molecules. And since I have um, now two OH groups, I'm going to need two water molecules as well. So here's an important thing, a mole ratio of one to two to one uh, to two to one. OK, these numbers are the coefficients in front of each. And obviously, if there isn't one, then we just put a one. Now I have three very important variables I need to consider. Number of moles, which I'm going to put under the mole ratio because that's important. Volume, which I put next because number of moles divided by volume is equal to concentration. So what do I already know? For the sulfuric acid, I know that the concentration is 0.1 molar. And for the potassium hydroxide, I know that its concentration is 0.15 molar. And also, that it has a volume of 17.8 mils. And as I did before, I'm going to convert that straight away into 0178 litres. Now, my way of solving these is to go up, across and down. So I'm going to go up first. So I'm going to go this way. So what I need to do is put my name on my CV. So the number of moles of the potassium hydroxide is equal to 0.01. Uh, 78 multiplied by 0 0.15. I've done those back to front. The concentration is 0.15 and the volume is 0 0.0178, but um, the multiplication is the same. So let's just do that 0.15 multiplied by 0 0.0178. And what I have is uh, 2.67 times 10 to the minus 3. Uh, moles. Now, the next thing I do is I go across. So my value is going to go in here, 2.67 times 10 to the minus 3. Now I'm going to go across. So the mole ratio was 2 to 1, which means that I need to halve that value in order to um, know the number of moles of sulfuric acid that have reacted. And so then I have a value now of 1.3 uh, 
three, five times 10 to the minus three. And that's the number of moles of sulfuric acid, which is reacted. And now this time I need the volume. So I know that uh, N equals CV. So therefore V, let's do another color. V is going to be equal to uh, N on C. I know the number of moles now is 1.335 times 10 to the minus three. And I'm going to divide that by 0 0.1. And when I do that, I get a value of 1.33 times 10 to the minus 2. If I multiply that by 1,000, I'll get it into mils, and I'll see that what I need is 13.3 mils of my um, sulfuric acid in order to fully neutralize the potassium hydroxide. Now the final question that we want to look at is the pH of resultant solutions when you mix two solutions together. So we'll do exactly the same thing that we did before, but this time we just need to be aware of, of whether or not there's a solution in excess or and or one uh, that's a limiting agent. So in this case, I've got lithium hydroxide and I'm reacting it with nitric acid. This is a nicer one because our ratios are a little easier. Um, we have uh, lithium nitrate as our salt in solution and we form water. And this equation is already balanced. So our mole ratios are one to one to one to one. So that's nice. Then what I'm going to do is I need to work out the number of moles of each of these. So let's put the values that we have in and see where we go from here. So for the lithium first, it's a one molar solution of lithium hydroxide and we have 20 mils. So let me make that straight away 0 0.02 liters. For the nitric acid, I'll just do the lighter blue and uh, it is a 0.5 molar solution, 0 0.5 molar. And we have 30 mils, so it's 0 0.03 liters. Now, as I did before, I'm going to go up for each of these, and I'm going to have a look at my total number of moles. So in the first case, I've got um, my name on my CV. So I'm going to multiply uh, my concentration by volume, and I will get 0 0.02 times 1. So that's not too difficult. 0 0.02 moles. But for the um, nitric acid, I have 0.5 times 0 0.03. So this one's going to be 0 0.015 moles. So when this reaction occurs, because my ratio is one to one, I have a limiting agent. I have one of my species which uh, cannot fully react with the other. So this is limiting and this is in excess. What I want to do then is I want to look at the one that's in excess because that's going to be the critical one. So as a result of this, I have an excess of lithium hydroxide. And the number of moles I have is 0 0.02 minus 0 0.015, which is going to be 0 0.005 moles. Because I have 0 0.05 moles, my final volume is equal to 20 plus 30 which is 50 mils because I've added both of these solutions together. So now I have a final volume of 50 mils. So therefore my final concentration is going to be number of moles over volume, which is 0 0.005 divided by and 50 mils is going to be 0 0.05 liters. Um, and when I do that, I'm going to end up with a final concentration of 0 0.01 moles per liter of my lithium hydroxide. Now, the problem that I have um, to solve now is that I need the final pH. And in order to get the final pH, I'm going to have to actually do a two step calculation because I'm going to have to start with the um, pOH. So again, just in red here, let's put the pOH 
is equal to minus the log base 10 concentration of OH minus ions. And because this is the value that's going in there, I'm going to have minus the log base 10. I'm running out a little space here, but let's just do it anyway. Uh, base 10 of 0 0.1, and that's going to be a pOH equal to 1. Now, the problem is that's not the pH, we, but we do know that um, 14 minus the pOH is equal to the pH, and therefore the pH of this solution is going to be 13. Now, this is a very um, basic solution. So even though we've tried to neutralize um, these solutions, we find that because one of these was in excess, it remained in the solution afterwards and still ended up, therefore, with a very high uh, pH solution. This has been a lot, this big video, lots of worked examples here for you, and I'm sure you'll do plenty more in class. Good luck with them, keep practicing, and thanks for watching.